What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast presented by evergreenprofits.com. He was very, uh, very determined with that dot com. Dot com. I should get a voiceover artist just to record evergreenprofits.com, but very professionally. Mm. So then every time we do this intro, we just like press a button and it's like, brought to you by evergreenprofits.com. Mm. We're not that cool. We're not that polished. We could be one day. But maybe we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today's episode was an absolute... It, I didn't, we didn't know where it was going to go, actually. We had absolutely no plan. We literally like hit record the second we started the call with Ori, which typically we kind of give people a little a bit of a heads up of what we're going to do. But uh, this guy, he just rolls off the cuff. So Ori Bengal is our guest. He's amazing. He's kind of, he does it all. He's uh, an amazing artist for one. That's probably his biggest thing that he's got going on now. Well over 2,000 days of doing art every single day and publishing it. So it's not just like stick figure type stuff like Matt and I would probably do. Um, he's he's doing sculptures, 3D, uh, oil paintings, like digital. Um, I mean, he's got this massive process. He breaks it all down. So if you're interested. But um, he's using accountability in a very interesting way to basically do that and not give up. And it's uh, just something that I think we can all relate to in a powerful way. So Absolutely. And, you know, th- he's actually created... Um a new piece of art for 2,160 days in a row as of this recording. So it'll probably be a lot more by the time (laughs) this actually gets published. Yeah. So it's been pretty (laughs) insane. And so what we're going to talk about on this episode is we're actually going to, we're going to chat with him about, uh, we're actually going to talk about art and how to do good art and how to keep up with it. But then what I was really curious about is how does this mofo make money just doing art? (laughs) So we actually get into that too. So it's uh, really fun stuff. And um, let's start by uh, talking about how Ori likes to get chased around by bulls. Yeah, why not? Let's All get right. into that. Let's dive in. We are recording, Ori. <laughs> <you Woo>! <laughs> We're live! Uh, Punctuation is really important. We are recording Ori, uh-huh. and we are recording Ori. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Comma Ori? <laughs> um, yeah, so just for the listeners, we basically have not prepped Ori for anything because we're just jumping into it and see how it flies. It's going to be... Ori said he likes to live dangerously and just uh, take what we <laughs> give him. It's true. I can uh, I can give you my uh, the link to my uh, bull poker video that you can oh include in the show notes. You know what's funny? We actually please had do. Um, please no, do. We, we had, watched that. We <laughs> had Marshall Wayne on the show, and for whatever reason, when Marshall Wayne was on the show, he talked about you doing bull poker. Yep. And we linked to that YouTube video on the Marshall Wayne episode. <laughs> Sweet. This this is how I'm getting my SEO. I do <laughs> dumb shit, and I let other people talk about it. <laughs> So really quick, explain the video. Like, just explain what the hell bull poker is, so we can close right. that loop. And so, then we'll... uh, bull poker. You have uh, a couple people sitting around a small card table. Uh, you have cards. I really don't know what the cards are for, <laughs> other than so you can call it poker. <laughs> and uh, then they let a pissed off bull into the arena, and the last person out of their seat wins. So it's kind of like playing chicken, almost. <laughs> it's like the last one to like not run away from the table. Well, you see, it's yeah. not just about running away. For example, the the guy sitting across from me uh, had his back to the bull, so the bull's coming right at me, and oh. then I watch this guy get like flung eight <laughs> feet in the air, and then it, it is all going really fast. And then the bull like headbutts the table, like smashes it into my knee, breaks the table on my knee, and that broke my chair. So technically, I was out of my seat, mm. and then I was just running around, you know. Uh, grabbing the fence so I can jump and not get hit by the bull. And, you know, I thought that was kind of fun. And then after <laughs> I did that like, two or three times, they're like signaling me like, no, dude, just get on the other side of the fence. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. And, you know, the the really sad part is What's that? After all that. And I don't even know where the I played bull poker and all I got was this lousy shirt shirt is. <laughs> so you did it for the shirt and now you don't have the shirt uh, no i i did because i was hoping to win um <laughs> and in in all honesty this is probably like you know this this will definitely tell your, your listeners who they're listening to so the origin of me going to play bull poker was um i was i was couch surfing for six years so i was staying with this uh 
uh, this woman who was the Visitors and Conventions Bureau representatives for Oregon, uh, sorry, for Coos Bay, Oregon. And she was introducing me to this other woman who was the Visitors and Conventions person for Bandon, which is another city near there. Mm -hmm. And so we're all having lunch. They had got their lunch before me. Um, and I, I sat down at the table while they were conversing. And I sit down right as they say, and who'd be dumb enough to do that? <laughs> and I was like, "You're looking." At oh, him. my ears are ringing. <laughs> <laughs> you said the magic words. <laughs> <laughs> who'd be dumb enough to do what? <laughs> oh, my. holy shit! Yeah, so they, they must have been the ones recording that video then, because I do yes, remember hearing two women. Yes, and it's hilarious because yeah. they're giving the commentary yeah. about how much they try to talk me out of this and how terrible of an idea they think it is. And the first multiple minutes of it actually are the, the MC, the host, whatever you want to call it. Um, the guy mm -hmm. reading a huge and lengthy and hilarious disclaimer stating right. how dumb we, the contestants really are for doing this <laughs> and they're not liable. Yeah. I remember that. It was that was actually just as funny as the actual bull part. <laughs> you know? I thought so too. <laughs> oh man! All right, we'll link that sucker up. Shoot us a link after this call. Um, <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, wait. Cool. And, and since oh. you guys, since you guys are marketing and trying to teach people like great marketing advice, yeah, I will say this so we're all laughing at bull poker and how dumb I am to do it, and yay, I survived. But, um you would have no idea how many free drinks I've gotten at marketing conventions and conferences because of this story. And usually I don't even have to tell it. Like usually I'll just be speaking to someone and someone else will go, Hey man, was that bull poker thing real? And then everyone <laughs> else is like, Oh, what's bull poker. And then it, because it's a thing that hardly anyone's done. I mean, how many people do you guys know who have done bull poker? I've never even heard of it before you. But yeah, then when I saw it, I went on a YouTube like freaking rabbit hole, and I was like, "Wow, this is crazy!" <laughs> yeah. But no, you were the only one. That yeah. is awesome. So, so you know, it's it's. I can say the same thing. How many people do you know who have done a new work of art every single day for two thousand one hundred and sixty days in a row? Wow. <laughs> That's pretty insane. That's pretty insane. Yeah. So uh, let's we'll talk about the art in a second. But I actually yeah, want to yeah. I want to step back a little bit because you've had yeah. a. A sort of myriad of of jobs. In fact, when I first met you, I believe it was at Blog World Expo in LA back somewhere around 2009, 2010, and we were fierce competitors. We, I mean, we hated each other. Did you punch each other? Yeah, we got in a fight because so. um, you know we both had. Uh, it, was, it was really bloody. Uh, we we like actually uploaded to YouTube, but it was too violent and got taken down immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because we both had we both had training programs that taught WordPress, but. <laughs> and for anybody listening, that didn't really happen. Tickle um, fight. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's all Matt, it was. Matt, Matt took a baby out of a stroller and was beating me over the head with it. it was, <laughs> oh, man. Those babies don't hurt as much as you'd think, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let, let's hear sort of the, the sort of progression, because I know now you're, you're pretty much all in on the artwork, and we are going to we, we want to talk about that and what you've got coming up with your book, and I've seen it, and it's freaking killer. But I want to I want to sort of give people the progression of how you got there. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I will say this. So um, th there's definitely a lot of life lessons in that journey. And that's actually why I'm putting the book out. But so it all started when I was a little kid. <laughs> now, um, my my mom still says tells me to this day very often. She reminds me about how when I was in third grade, uh, she went to the parent teacher meeting and you know, the teacher told her, oh, yeah, or he does great. He's one of our better students, always raising his hand, gets the right answers, you know, does great on the tests and always taking notes. Or so I thought, because when I actually checked his notebook for the biannual notebook review, there was not like a single word in there or he had just been doodling the whole year. <laughs> so I, I'd been, you know, drawing kind of like my whole life. And I never even realized that that was like a thing or that that was my thing because no one ever said, oh, this is great stuff, you know, and oh, you can be an artist. That's a career or anything. So it's just something I did for fun and wanted to get better at. Um, but I wasn't even like really showing my art to anyone. Mm -hmm. And um, 
then uh all right let's skip the the you know teenage years of <laughs> like regular jobs movie theater clothes comp usa all that crap uh i did get into comp usa uh solely so that i could get cost mm-hmm. wholesale cost on uh computer parts so that i could build uh bigger better faster computers so that i can do more with with my art at the time i wanted to do 3d animation mm-hmm. um like you, I got into photography uh, along the way. Uh, that actually, wait, a really important jumping point was in 2001, um, I was uh, a demo artist for some really expensive 3D software. So I'm the guy that made it look easy. So you do spend uh, $240,000 and, um, and then you hire me to do the training. And I was dating this girl and she said, oh, my God, your art's so good. You got to do an art show. And I said, well, I don't know. She's dating me. So how good can her judgment like really be? <laughs> That's a good point. And, yeah, you know, and uh, but she said, no, no, uh, I, I showed it to my mom, I showed her your stuff. And my mom uh, works with all these galleries and she wants to meet you. I'm like, wow. Hmm. she's not dating me and she works with galleries. She sounds like really highly qualified. Let's, let's meet. And, and she said, you should definitely do uh, an art show. It's okay. And I didn't actually know what, you know, how to research things like I do now. And the internet kind of sucked back in 2001 compared to now. Mm -hmm. And so I just signed up, I put the word out and I signed up for the first thing I found, which was, it wasn't even really an art show. It was one of those like first Friday, second Saturday art walk kind of things. Mm-hmm. And people aren't really there to buy expensive art. They're just there to, you know, look around. around. It's yeah. something to do. And I didn't think of that. I didn't sell anything. And so I figured, well, I guess I must be a failure as an artist because I didn't sell anything. And uh, so I stopped making art for 10 years. Now, uh, a couple of four and a half years after that. So in 2005, I discovered audiobooks, um, mm-hmm. and that absolutely transformed my life because I wasn't, you know, a great reader. Like books would kind of bore me. I don't know, maybe I have dyslexia or something. And um, then I discovered conferences, and that was obviously a cool change. And then um, the, the I was always drawn to marketing and advertising. I just thought it was. I'm, I'm not even sure what it was that that drew me in about it. I think it's just a good, fun way to communicate with people mm-hmm. that gets results. I don't know. And um, and then uh, I went couch surfing in 2006. My, my lease was about to expire. And um, I thought, hey, you know, why don't I, um, instead of like renewing here, or going back to my parents or whatever, why don't I just kind of go everywhere <laughs> and then figure out where I want to renew? Because think about it, we're all, we're all where we live because that's where we've been, right? You move there for a job or for a lot of people, they, they're they born there and that's kind of where you stay for 20 years. Right. Uh, my parents moved us from Israel and I've been in South Florida for 20 years. So um, yeah, I gave away my stuff. Um, got in my car and uh, went on a journey to find where I'm going to renew my lease. And six years later, that ended up being Austin. And in the process, I discovered I I went to a lot of marketing conferences because I really like the people in Internet marketing. A lot of them have had to learn a lot and most of them are self-made. And they also have the flexibility of schedule that if there's something cool to do, they can go and do it. Um, and everyone told me, oh yeah, you should, you should do, um, you should put out a course, you know, put out something and to pay for my, um, my couch surfing adventures. I made, I did a little bit of photography. I made some websites. And, uh, so I I created eventually a course on a WordPress and, uh, I released that in uh, 2011 and it was, it was, uh, it was absolutely life changing. Uh, I think it was the first big thing that I'd actually completed mm. in my life. I've started a million things, but, but completing is, is different. Yeah. And also in 2011, 
uh, right before the launch of my uh, WordPress course, I went to, uh, to Maui and my buddy took me to all these galleries in Lahaina and it, it broke my heart. Like by the fifth gallery, I was completely heartbroken because I realized that, holy shit, art was always my thing. It was a thing that I didn't need money to incentivize me to do. I didn't need anything. It was just something I wanted to do. And I did on my free time. And I haven't done it for 10 years because I tried something once mm. and it didn't go as I planned. And um, thankfully, I was more persistent when it came to learning to walk. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, here, I didn't get that right the first time <laughs> either. But and so I vowed that I would do art every day, and that lasted a whole two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next year, since I now had a lot more um, discretionary income because of the WordPress course, I, um, I I I had hired my little brother, and I was uh, I flew him in from San Francisco. He was a bartender at the time, but he's got amazing people skills and I was like oh this guy would be an amazing affiliate manager and recruiter and so I flew him in I, I gave him a bunch of training I took him to a whole bunch of personal development stuff including uh life book where you fly to Chicago you sit there for four days with no internet no wi-fi no cell phone and you just kind of work on what you want and what you don't want in your life and well, I haven't touched my life book since I got out of there. I couldn't tell you what's in it. <laughs> I do remember that I, um, for when it came to what I don't want, I didn't want that feeling of heartbreak again of not doing my, my thing. And so I decided that, you know, they, they tell you obviously not just to think about what you want and don't want, but also come up with a plan. And so my plan was I'm going to leverage accountability because accountability has worked for me in the past for completing WordPress, for getting six pack abs. So one time I tried doing that. And um, so I posted on Facebook, hey, I'm going to do a new work, uh, a new drawing every day. And I knew that somewhere out there, some asshole just waiting to go, ha ha, I knew you could do it. But now I feel bad for that asshole because it's been 2,160 <laughs> days and I haven't missed a day. I remember that post actually. I remember right then when you started, and and then when I mean you would post and you might still do this, but a new your new artwork every single day. They'll do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. see, this is guilty freaking freaking Facebook blocking your stuff from me now. I need to go like everything of yours again because I love seeing that stuff. Because I'm like, fuck yeah, he's doing it, man. Because I I literally remember when you started that. That was I can't believe that it was 2012 now. Yeah, uh, April twenty second, April twenty first, two thousand twelve, and um, your your reaction right there actually is exactly the reason that that I'm putting out a book because it's you know a a reminder for people of like yeah sure the art's great and I've had fun making it and selling it and all that good stuff but it's it's so much more than that it's that reminder it shows people that hey just a regular guy who's dumb enough to do things like bull poker, um, you know, is can actually make time to do the thing for their, their passion. And here's what happens when you do it every single day for seven years. Mm. Um, you know, and I mean, I just told you guys a story and I, so I've failed and I've quit a couple of times with a huge gap in between. I mean, so it is like, you know, more than 10 years in, in between and, and I still picked it up and, you know, now, now I absolutely am running it, uh, running with it. Um, as you said, uh, the funny thing is though, um, you, you said, yeah, I've noticed you're like really running with it. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I kept doing the art, but I never actually like fully owned it until just February. Like, so just like a month and a half ago. Wow. So after like over 2000 days of doing art every single day, all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I just realized I'm an artist who has a lot of marketer friends. Cause before I was just like, Oh, I'm just a marketer who happens to do art every day. Mm. So now that flipped around. And so since uh, February I started being 
more of an artist. I've been hanging out with other artists. I've been uh, going to gallery shows, been putting my art in galleries. And, and, and then also this book, uh, what I sent you was what I finished designing in December. That was going to be just for, for me. So when people say, oh, well, what kind of art do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do everything. I paint, I sculpt, I carve, I weld, I paint robots, I paint women and dogs and mm-hmm. sci-fi and abstract. And people are like, it's, it's really hard to fathom or even get a picture of what that looks like. So mm-hmm. now I can just whip my book out and show it to people and and they really get it. And the reaction is usually appropriate. Like, wow, you did all this. <laughs> yeah. and, but it was just going to be for me and my collectors. And now that I've like, decide i'm going to own being an artist i'm like you know what i'm making it bigger like bigger pages more pages thicker pages i'm making a nice collector's box and i'm gonna get the word out like i'm, I'm doing a, a viral contest giveaway something that you guys have spoken yeah. about on multiple episodes uh which i highly recommend your listeners go back and listen to because it's fantastic content and i'm not saying that just because i'm on the show but rather because <laughs> it really inspired me thank you man Thank you. Yeah, no, a lot of people have said that, and that's, and I'm happy you're gonna do it. Yours is like prime for the picking, man. You have so much to give away, you know, bonuses. I mean, there's just a lot of good stuff all around everything you're doing, <laughs> it's, and that's not that's not bullshit. Because I'm like, I'm just kind of, I'm actually scrolling through your feed right now, looking at your latest work. I'm like, holy crap! Like I've missed a lot. <laughs> like I really have. So with your with your daily picture, do you ever do you ever have days where you're like, oh shit, it's eleven fifty eight, and then you just draw like a stick figure, and you're like, fuck it, that's my picture for the day. <laughs> you, you know, it's funny you say that. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, I've there's there's plenty of days. Where, so so when what I consider a day is is a day of being awake. Uh, it's not, it's gotta be uploaded by midnight. If you actually look at the timestamps, a lot of them are like four in the morning, mm-hmm. six in the morning, because if I was doing it at midnight, uh, I'd stunt the pieces. A lot of them just take more time than that. Yeah. And uh, a lot of pieces actually take longer than a day, but I only get the credit for the day that they're uploaded. And, uh, so while I'm working on a bigger piece, I'll have to do like a bunch of smaller pieces so that I have something for those individual days. And um, not this past Valentine's Day, but the one before, um, I went uh, I, I went with my girl to um, uh, Sedona, Arizona, mm-hmm. and we had this beautiful cabin on top of a mountain with a view, and uh, we ate some mushrooms, and we went camping, or not camping, hiking, mm-hmm. and we came back, and, you know, she got this Polish mead that, that was amazing, <laughs> and I was all proud of myself. I started this great fire in, in the bedroom, in, in the fireplace. In the <laughs> Thanks place. for clarifying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's small but important details. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, uh, and she lit candles and everything was looking all romantic and we're about to, you know, air quotes here, celebrate Valentine's Day. <laughs> and she says, she whispers in my ear, did you do your art for the day? Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, no! I did not. I think the world is getting a stick figure today. And he says, no, don't give the world a stick figure. And well, couldn't you just so, put a camera in the corner of the room and call that art? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I've Good. thought of doing stuff like that before, but and, and I've I've done things where they go kind of quickly, and then I'm like, nah, I don't work mean. hard enough at it. I, I need I should do something like bigger, better, whatever, and, mm. and I do. And so, um, yeah, I was I was in bed like you know painting, and I think it took me like two hours or something. I made an abstract. Uh, two hours three hours i don't know but they're like l- literally tears coming out of my eye because i did not i wanted to you know be spending time with her and technically i was but you know more right. engaged with her than rather than making my art but it came out great a lot of people like that art um and you know we still had a fantastic uh valentine's day um a lot of times that oh crap it's eleven fifty six. uh it's more like it's, you know, whether it's 10 p.m. or 2 a.m., it's like, oh, I'm exhausted. Time to go to bed. Oh, shit, I didn't do my art. Well, and, you know, so sometimes the timestamp is four in the afternoon mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. 
um you know i didn't i didn't do my art and even when i want to do a stick figure i've done this for so long i can't do a stick figure uh because <laughs> like i it would just be so out of place it's like you can't right you know you can't go out there and give some the world something that that sucks after you've been unless you're making an actual statement like if i had a real reason other than oh i'm tired then right. yeah sure but other than that nah man yeah um, so so every single piece of art you've ever done has gone on your facebook uh, profile like the daily piece of art yeah and actually for for you and your listeners um you can go to the art of ori.com forward slash year six year five year four year three year two year one each one of those will take you to the respective facebook album where you can see all the pieces um year one is not in chronological order unfortunately facebook still doesn't let you just sort album by date um but um i believe the rest of them are mostly chronological um for that year but regardless you can you yeah. can not only see all the art, but you can actually see the progression between years and all the different things I've tried. I mean, I've done jewelry and welding and carving and 3D and, you know, obviously yeah, painting. You do. You've done it all because I remember, yeah, you've, I think you've showed us this, uh, some kind of sculpture when you're back in town here in San Diego and how you were talking how you can create something because i think you use the ipad right uh typically for I've, I've some of my art was made on the ipad i haven't actually like literally i haven't touched my ipad in probably a couple of years i cracked the screen and, and mm. didn't feel like um i i used to do a lot of the drawing on the ipad uh i do a lot of stuff on my uh on my laptop mm. and i have what's called a wacom tablet so it's um uh, a large panel of plastic and yeah. a pen and it's pressure sensitive so you can paint with it you can sculpt with it and um hmm. it the the thing that you're probably gonna see from me i don't know if this year or next year but uh, pretty soon i'm gonna do it just because it's expensive but there's um there's this foundry uh, foundry is a place that most artists use to do their uh their bronze sculptures mm -hmm. uh they just give them a clay sculpture and the foundry does all the back breaking work of of making a bronze yeah um, and so there's this foundry in in tucson arizona that you can send them a 3d file and they have a seven axis cnc robot so basically a big robotic arm that can get in every nook and cranny mm -hmm. and it can carve uh, my design out of industrial foam up to six feet by ten feet Jesus. and then when that's done since it looks slightly machined they uh they spray it with uh oil-based clay and then I come in with uh, my carving tools. I, I blend, I, you know, add detail where it should be. And when it's done, I give them the green light and they make a bronze out of it. So I would love to do like life-size, larger than life sculptures. And uh, with this now, you can. Um, so, you know, something that you designed at Starbucks, uh, you know, all of a sudden is going to be like a ginormous uh bronze sculpture yeah and, that's so that's kind of that's pretty impressive yeah i mean we're not really in the art world so i, I mean personally i had no idea that that kind of thing even existed <laughs> well i was uh, and i was thinking i mean because i know you have matt you have interest in art i mean you have like sketchbooks over there and like how to draw figures but i'm just curious because i mean i remember you telling me this back in the day that's why i brought the ipad up but like, what are some easy ways? Because I'm sure a lot of people listening, yeah, they might be in business, but but shit, I mean, doing art is like meditative. It is meditation in a way. Oh, completely. Yeah. I'm, so. a, I'm a very happy person because I get to do this every day. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I have a if I have a horrible, shitty day, I just you know I, I'm like, well, at least I get to do my art, and I kind of can even channel it into a painting. Right. So, I mean, what would you recommend? Because there's probably some easy ways someone could just maybe get an iPad or get that, uh, I forget the name of the tablet. Yeah. Thing, but oh, um, yeah. so the, depending on the level, if you already have an iPad, 
uh, or uh, an Android, if you already have a tablet of some sort, mm -hmm. then absolutely, you know, there's, there's a lot of styluses available for them. Um, and there's a ton of apps. Um, one that I can recommend that does fantastic oil-based clay, uh, is, oh, sorry, oil-based uh, painting mm -hmm. is um, Art Rage. Mm. And this thing's like five bucks. I mean, that's ridiculously cheap. You can't get coffee for that these days. Right. So um, one awesome. of the ones I started with on the iPad, like the first one I got, I think was called Paper. And that one is only good for uh doing like a little light watercolor ink pencil like things that you'd only do on paper and mm -hmm. so it keeps it simple but it's um it's good at what it does and then there's uh a lot of people really like procreate uh i like the name obviously <laughs> but uh there's if you're on the computer you can get uh, Wacom, that's pronounced, oh, sorry, that's uh, spelled W A C O M. Mm -hmm. Uh, go to their website, or order it from Amazon, whatever you want. Go to Best Buy, they sell this thing kind of everywhere now. Mm -hmm. There's the whatever level of their product you get will be perfect. Like, yeah. uh, my, my ex, uh, she got the you know, like the hundred dollar version, mm -hmm. and it's great. You know, they're all amazing technology. The I have the the six hundred dollar version. That's like the Wacom Intuos Pro Paper Edition. That Fancy. means that I can draw on paper up to a thousand different drawings without the computer. And then when I get within Bluetooth range, it will sync up, and those drawings will be there uh, in my computer uh, in a vector format, mm -hmm. so that I can then blow them up to any size without any loss and then you know paint in the details and so yeah. on no that's awesome i actually have a wacom tablet um it's uh it's called a, a bamboo i think yeah and perfect. Um, i never ever got used to you know what i did on the tablet showing up on the screen you know i was never able to get like as detailed and comfortable with it as i wanted to so i kind of gave up on it a long time ago mm -hmm. and so now with me i do pretty much it I, i'm not a big artist i don't do it every day it's just from time to time it's like a a way to sort of check out and just take my brain off things. But I, I pretty much just have a, a notepad with blank pages and a pencil. That's pretty much all I ever use. But I've tried to get into the digital stuff and never managed to get used to it. I actually have a, um, a Kindle Fire that I, I literally bought the Kindle Fire to do drawings with on the Kindle Fire. But there's like too much of a delay between touching the screen and the actual and it's it's very 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 minute but it's enough that when you're trying to draw um accurately you notice it you know oh, what yeah. i mean yeah well so so wake up walk home tomato tomato <laughs> vagina whatever um so <laughs> wake home walk home is uh their their high-end line like the really expensive line is, is called the cintiq and that it's basically like a monitor like a flat screen that you draw right on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Matt was talking about with the tablets, like with mine, I'm looking at my screen, but my hand is not drawing on the screen like you would with a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing on my tablet and the cursor moves on the screen. So it's basically like using a mouse, you know, where you're not looking at the mouse. Mm -hmm. And so um, one thing you can do, there's, there's a, um, there's an app for the desktop and iPad called AstroPad, and that turns your uh, Wacom, or sorry, that turns your iPad into like a Cintiq. Uh, so you control your computer via your iPad. What? And now with the, the new pencil uh, stylus, which is pressure sensitive and rotation uh, sensitive and all that, you can do some wonderful things. So that that's a great way to save a couple thousand. And also, if you like uh, drawing on paper with a pen, and you can there's a there's a pen out there called the Live Scribe, uh, I I, which that. is fantastic for recording oh, yeah. audio and syncing your. I use it for taking notes at conferences because yeah. you're like, well, why the hell did I write this? And then you just tap on where the words and it will play back the audio that was playing at that time and you're like oh <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I think I, oh. I got that when um, I think it was John Reese like six years ago or something. I think he like did a VSL or something video sales letter and used that. And Matt and I both bought like the first version. We're like, it's like magic. Yeah, his his yeah. sales video was literally him drawing stuff on paper yeah. and recording the audio straight into the pen. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I I had one. I I also got it forever ago, and I haven't. I just got out of, out of storage, and uh, the software doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Like they don't have a new version to support that. But I'm considering getting a new one. Um, a because it's useful for note taking again, because you can capture the audio and all that. But um, the other thing you can do with it is if you draw you know, you can then bring it into the computer, yeah, uh, yeah. like your notes. So, you know, since you said you want more of the digital stuff, but you don't like the lag, well, just, you know, draw on paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that actually reminds me of the last time I used that pen. <laughs> I literally was getting a psychic reading done in Sedona. So I was like, Ooh. oh, there's the, uh, the, close the Sedona loop there. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Mind. Good job. Yeah. No, I've, I've actually always wanted to get into the, the digital stuff. Um, because I, I like the idea of just, you know, when I'm traveling or something, having a tablet and I can sort of sketch stuff on the tablet. I just never really got used to using it um, just just because of the delay. And I, I think part of the problem I had was that I went for the absolute cheapest tablet I could find, which was the Kindle Fire. Mm. And uh, that probably wasn't the, the smartest way if I was to start over. I probably, I mean, this is something I still want to get, but I haven't yet. Is the yeah. the iPad Pro just looks freaking phenomenal? That one looks nice. I do have a little spare iPad at home that I just got, so I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely try some of these out. Um, yeah, definitely. And and now your listeners all know completely from A to Z how to get into uh, digital art. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I want to go back to this whole accountability thing because I think that's oh, like please. that's yeah. a huge because. It, I don't want to like hide, or I don't want to just like graze over the fact that you literally said you couldn't really finish anything until you, you put your ass on the line. And yep. I guess talk about how that's like totally shifted your mindset, where it's taken you now with for your future, like what your future plans are. I don't even know other than the books. <laughs> um, I don't think you know. I don't think we all know. But still, it's like I want to speak into that accountability and see how that's really changed things. Uh, absolutely, and and I'm really glad that uh, one of y'all's mics is like fritzing out a little bit. Just, uh -oh. uh, just so uh, it's just on occasion. Anyways, um, so yeah, I'm I'm really glad that you brought that up because um, you know, yeah, sure, I want to get the word out about my book and all that stuff, but uh, I don't really care about that much. Uh, one of the things that I do care about, maybe it's just me getting old wiser well older anyways um is that um you know i just i, I want to make more of a difference and the i've gone through so much that the lessons are are definitely helpful for people and uh so the accountability is probably the biggest lesson that i can share uh, on anything because it really applies to everything mm -hmm. um it's finishing things for myself has been difficult for other people. I mean, like doing things for other people has never been an issue. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a superhero complex. So I like to save the day and uh, I've got a lot of skills. I've done everything in internet marketing. When, when I created make WordPress easy, I created the course. I did the VSL. Uh, I got my own affiliates. I did my own tech support. I, set up the affiliate system and you know it did kind of every, every aspect of it and it did really well mm -hmm. uh the only part that i was having a hard time with was finishing the course and uh kate buck jr had a course called let's get social which um perry belter and ryan dice of digital marketer had eventually uh it was actually like their their guinea pig for what uh, their publishing model could look like. Yeah. And so uh, because I helped Kate create it, uh, she she was constantly saying like, hey, when's your course going to be done so I can mail it? When's your course going to be done so I can mail it? And, you know, I'd even done a couple of modules um, in my own name, like in her, in her course, like I did a little WordPress module so that people could, uh, you know, make their own websites yeah, and yeah. such. And, and, uh, so Kate was 
not constantly, but occasionally on my ass about it. <laughs> and I mean, that's a great problem to have someone yeah. with a, a large list, you know, nagging you to when, when can I mail your product already? Usually we all have the opposite problem. It's like, Hey, will you mail for me? <laughs> it's a really good product. I promise you. And, and here I had people waiting to mail before even knowing the product would be great or not. I mean, they know me, so they figured it'd be good. Sure. But, um, so yeah, that was, that was the case. Um, and so I initially, I created the product, this created a light accountability and that, um, I posted, Hey, um, I'm going to make a, you know, a, a WordPress product, uh, who wants in, it's going to be cheaper now. And you can be there as I record it and get, you know, I was going to basically drip feed the, the content mm -hmm. and then six months into it, I was like, you know, wait a minute. Uh, let me actually view my my product. Like, let me see what it's like for the people on the other end. I watched it and it bored the shit out of me. I was like, <laughs> screw this. Uh, so I I scrapped it. I started from scratch where I spoke much faster. Uh, I I scripted it out instead of just talking about each thing and no you can watch me do this this and this no it was fun and i took out all the ums and uhs and i added fun animations and graphics for like everything and and now it was exciting in fact i even had a testimonial from a nine-year-old girl that has one hand wow. and is making wordpress sites with my course wow um, that's cool belcher said you don't even need your vsl you just need that video and uh and a buy button and you'll sell like a shitload of them <laughs> and, and but but yeah it was because of kate that i she's she finally sat me down so with accountability another another superpower is specificity because mm -hmm. she's like well when are you gonna get it done i'm like oh pretty soon and she's like well what soon like a month two? i'm like oh i don't know she's like well how much is left uh, you know, I got just a couple modules. She's like, how many? Mm. And I went and counted and it was actually like, I think 11 more uh, videos that need to be done. And now I saw that, Hey, it's only 11. And now I could also assign how long I would take. Cause before I was just blowing it off. I, I didn't know how many, so I got that done and you know, life changed. Cause all of a sudden I went from being basically homeless to like, having disposable income to go do whatever, whenever, uh, at least for a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, the next use of accountability was with, um, and this one actually ties into the daily art. I'll tell you why in a second, uh, getting six pack abs mm -hmm. um, out of the blue uh, in July, I get this uh, thought in my head, huh? Uh, I've never had six pack abs. Like I've lifted weights before, but I've, I've never actually had like defined abs. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And um, so I post on Facebook, Hey, it's July. Uh, by my birthday in December, I'm going to have six pack abs. And so to stay accountable, I was posting pictures of me with no shirt and a picture to scale every week, like once a week uh, between July and December. And you know, initially it sucked because I did not like the way I looked. So I definitely didn't want to post those pictures, <laughs> but that really motivated me to make sure that each week's picture looked better than the previous big week's picture. Otherwise I would hear about it. Oh yeah. And, and because people are watching it, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't like go and cheat and all that stuff. Although it, I didn't need to cheat. I was uh, another important lesson from my life is find a fun way to do things because there's a lot of ways to do things and most of them suck, but there's a way that works for you. So for getting six pack abs, I, I went and found this crazy diet called carb backloading, which I call my ice cream and candy diet <laughs> because five days no carbs and in three days of uh ben and Jerry's. no carbs in the morning uh then you have your hard workout at night and then you have a four hour window to spike your insulin now that could be just eat a sweet potato and have a cup of apple juice but you know it didn't specify exactly so i 
would have each of those three nights, uh, two pints of ice cream, oh, uh, two large energy drinks and four bags of candy. And of course I'd post pictures of this online each one of those nights, uh, just to fuck with people. And everyone's <laughs> like, you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to die. You're going to be so fat and all this stuff. And I actually shredded up. And, uh, so come December, I actually hit my goal for the first time in my life. You could actually see the shape of my abs and, I still don't recognize those photos to tell you the truth. <laughs> wow. Who is that? And um, the the thing is, so I hit my goal. And so I called my friends. I'm like, hey, let's go out for margarita as an, an ice cream cake. And, you know, I didn't go work out that day because it was my birthday. I hit my goal. And the next day I was a little hungover. And I was like, you know, God, it's kind of nice taking a couple of days off i've worked out so hard for the last half a year and then two and a half later two and a half years later i'm like shit i'm fat Ugh. and so with my art i don't let a single day go by because i don't want one day to turn into two and a half years mm. and uh and then going back to what i was saying about accountability it was that accountability that they kept me uh, in line. They kept me working out despite the days where I really didn't feel like it. And um, once I realized that, you know, I knew it could apply to other things so that when I was like, okay, I really hate this feeling of heartbreak. How can I not ever go through that again? But, you know, at least when it comes to like not following my purpose mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. stuff, and I was like, well, I'm just going to use accountability because it's worked in the past. And clearly, it's still working. Well, it's and, like you're channeling it in the in the places you want. You said it's got to be fun, something you actually give a shit about, you know? Absolutely. Oh, my God, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people ask me about, like, so, you know, what would have happened if you, you didn't take those 10 years off, you know, like if my art show had gone just fine. And I'm really glad that it did because I never even knew that that was, like, my purpose, uh, it was uh, not having that for so long that made me realize it. And also not having done it for so long gave me a chance to do other things and try other things. That's why I got into marketing. And so I can say that, um, you know, I thankfully succeeded as a marketer mm-hmm. before I succeeded as an artist. You know, yeah. you say artist, most people think, oh, so where are you a waiter at? Right. You know, starving <laughs> artist, you got to have a whole bunch of other jobs and all sure. that stuff. Um, you know, March's bills were completely paid for 100 percent by selling art. Yeah. And wow. um, that was now I've done websites along the way and I still do website work for um I only have like two clients that I've kept because they're awesome and uh, because it keeps my skills sharp. And I, you know, regardless of that, uh, I don't love WordPress like I love doing my art. Otherwise, I'd probably still be running Make WordPress Easy. Um, But I I still believe that uh, WordPress is an amazing tool. I think that everyone should be able to create a website, not pay out the nose for uh, someone else to do it. Um, I mean, you, you can obviously pay someone to do it, but you should definitely know how it works so that you can communicate with that person and not be taken advantage of, et cetera. And um, also when, when dealing, you know, in regards to what you said about that, you got to love it and all that stuff. Uh, one way to, for doing something that you don't love mm-hmm. is to find something that you do love about it. Like, yeah, I don't love WordPress. Like, like I love art, but oh my God, is it an amazing way to change people's lives? You know, like you oh, teach yeah. a, a bunch of my students quit their jobs and became web designers instead. Like they were making, um, yeah, you know, I one one guy was uh, when when I taught how to sell websites. That was a separate course I did as an upgrade for my people. Uh, make selling websites easy. Mm-hmm. And I taught that one. Uh, I, I got a note from one of my students. He said uh, he was actually uh, right before Christmas. Uh, he was about he got an eviction notice, and you know he didn't have money, and he didn't know 
how to tell the wife and kids that, hey, we're going to be evicted and there's no money for presents this year. And he used the last of what he had on his credit card to sign up. But I was like, hey, sign up now and you can be in this live, you know, while we're recorded, ask you questions, all that stuff. And you get it cheaper than the people who are going to have to buy it later. Mm -hmm. So he used the last of his credit card. He got that course. Uh, just the first two weeks uh, content. And he went, he was at this party and he started talking to people and he sold $7,500 worth of websites uh, at that party just by having conversations with what I taught. And, and uh, you know, they didn't get evicted, took the wife to the spa, got the kids an Xbox and a bicycle. And, you know, and then he told me about it. He's like, yeah, dude, like I made more in that one party than I did in the last three months of working my ass off. Wow. And, um, uh, I was like, why didn't you just, I would have given you the course for free if I knew you were like that bad off. Yeah. It's like, and, but he told me afterwards and I was, I was like, you know, got all misty eyed. So, so yeah, you know, I, the, the ability, I, I found the thing that I was passionate about, which is changing lives if I can. And, and, you know, obviously you've changed a lot of lives with your WordPress course and, it, with your with the evergreen profits uh podcast and and community mm -hmm. uh you guys put out a ton of great content which i'm sure has changed yeah. a lot of lives thanks man so. yeah no i mean that's what i think we're both we we do similar stuff i mean we pump out content like yeah i mean you pump out more art than we're doing content but we're almost on pace we do like three a week hey i consider my content my art <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, true. I, it i'm is. not dissing it man no um, i know <laughs> And, you know, there, there's plenty of artists out there and there's plenty of people creating marketing content and, you know, you got to do what you, you got to be you. And that's, that's yeah. what I think so, makes it, makes it stand out that that is where it does become art. You are, you guys are creating art. Um, your, your podcasts are fun to listen to. Uh, your your content is like the the reading stuff is is fun to read. Yeah. It it presents in a friendly, easy to consume voice, and like, it doesn't feel like you guys are just shoving affiliate links down our throat. And in fact, you're even honest about it. My goal is for when you read this, that you will click on the little affiliate link <laughs> at the bottom. Like you say that, sure. and um, and you guys do really helpful stuff, and. Now, I, I know the behind the scenes, you know, I've, I've hung out y'all's office and um, with, with Dan and all those guys. And, you know, I, I know how much content you guys actually consume and how much high end stuff you, you receive and how you break it down for people. I mean, I think people just think that you guys just know all this stuff, but like that's <laughs> what you guys are doing is you're taking really really advanced stuff and you're you're breaking it down into easy to consume easy to understand chunks and that is absolutely an art and a great favor to humanity so, <laughs> i appreciate that, that no, that's cool, that's really awesome um that you say that and i'm glad we have it on recording because um now i'm gonna plaster that quote everywhere i can find no but hey, I, I do as have long one... as it's got a backlink i'm cool with that <laughs> hell yeah well uh so I, I have one last question here about the art and the marketing and how they're tied together so right now you're obviously doing your art every day and you're earning income from your art how how are you making that happen how are you actually earning off of your art right now well funny enough that actually is how i'm doing it i'm just posting my art every day and uh people are like hey can can I buy that one? Hmm. Uh, which, which is technically okay marketing and that I'm creating content and I have, but it's actually terrible marketing and that <laughs> I don't have uh, a URL for them to just go and buy. I did. And then uh, I, I'm just too creative for my own good. Um, so it's like, Oh, now I can do it this way and this way. And I keep changing what the website is or should be and all that. Now, of course that I'm, like owning being an artist, I'm changing all that. And now there's going to definitely be a definitive spot where you can uh, go to the art of ori.com and, and buy that. Um, to tie in marketing, uh, I'm going after it with a vengeance now. And uh, I'm really going to make a splash. And how I'm doing that is uh, what I mentioned earlier, some viral content 
uh, viral marketing, uh, which is, um, I'm going with up viral. I really loved the, the interview you guys had with Travis Ketchum about, uh, contest domination, yeah. but the thing that kind of broke my heart a little bit is that you have to do, um, their $80 a month and they bill annually. So basically a thousand dollars. Uh, if you want to be able to use retargeting pixels and confirmation pixels, mm, uh, gotcha. I'm definitely going to be running ads to this. Um, so I'm going to be running ads. I'm reaching out to some friends with lists because I'm not really selling anything. I mean, technically I'll be selling the art book, but it's more of an inspirational story that, you know, about what happens when you, you know, find out your purpose and when you, do it every single day for seven years and um and obviously it's, it's just a cool book and good art and all that stuff and so i'm having a lot of people mail to the contest which is uh contest.theartofori.com and i'll be giving away a custom 40 inch by 70 inch painting whatever you want painted um so that's basically um like a huge painting that you can hide behind if you want. <laughs> I charge, I charge about fifty two hundred dollars for one of those, like for custom, uh, between two and three grand for the ones that are not custom. Uh, if you don't have that kind of wall space, I can paint you something smaller, maybe even two things. I'll be giving away a couple of the the books themselves. Right now, it's at one hundred eighty three pages. I think the final one uh, is going to be about. 200 250 pages uh nice thick pages yeah. collector box all that fun stuff i want to put that yeah. something like that i'm just imagining i look at it I'm like i want that on the coffee table Bam. oh absolutely just a stereotypical yeah. art book you know but a good one absolutely and it'll be personally autographed by the artist yeah me and i, I mean I, I had a friend um back in the day back when i was living in south florida she lived like literally four minutes away so she would come and do her lunch every day at home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would just come over for lunch and would watch like Jerry Springer and <laughs> Aqua Teen Hunger Force and just hang out. And uh, it was fun. But what I remember is she had this like amazing coffee table book, uh, the Hotel La Chapelle by David La Chapelle is a photographer, uh, shoots a lot of uh, celebrities, and he's really creative and really fun personality stuff. And just about every single time I'd come over there, like regardless of how many times I've already been there and how many times I've seen this book, I'd always flip through it. It was just really cool images, and I'd always find something new. And um, and I think it's the case with this. I've um, even though this is my own art, I go flipping through it and I see new stuff all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I just did something that's really difficult. I now have so much more respect for homeless people uh, because I was like, oh, I'll just take my book and show it to random people on the street and get their reactions. Yeah. But it's actually kind of tough to go up to people who are, busy having their day whatever they're doing with their friends or family or themselves and all of a sudden like a stranger goes up to them and you get the look of death and it's like <laughs> you know you, you gotta interrupt what they're doing and, and ask them and it's like hey uh, i'm an artist i've been doing new work of art every single day for 2156 days you know oh uh, i'm actually gonna be putting out an uh, art book don't worry i'm not selling anything you can't even buy my book right now even if you want to uh can can i just show it to you get your reaction see what you think some people don't want to be on the on video. Other people are just like, yeah, I liked it. It's cool. <laughs> um, and funny enough, the uh, I've I've met some really awesome people because of it. That I'm now connected to on on Facebook, and mm -hmm. you know it went it went well. But it was really difficult. Uh, you know, I I had no clue. Yeah. So. That's that's a form of marketing that I don't necessarily recommend for everyone. <laughs> um, well, do you, uh, you, got, you you have some you just have like a special knack with people telling stories. I mean, like that's like you at a conference, and obviously you know the guys that even hold the conference T and C, but it's like everyone knows you. You have like a costume on or something. I mean, it's like you're always <laughs> flocked. So it's like you're doing something right. So I mean. 
your kind of marketing is what works for you. Your and, personal and, brand is definitely out there. People oh, know yeah. you. People see you. Um, you know, you're the type of guy that from across the the room, everybody's like, "Oh, Worry's over there," because yeah. you're probably wearing <laughs> a Superman cape and you've got big hair. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, yeah. I, I recently had uh, a couple of random strangers stop me and tell me that I have very luxurious hair. Um, <laughs> That's but, a new one. <laughs> it, it's hilarious. You know, the, the thing you said about like uh, the conferences. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's absolutely true. Uh, you know, but w- one year I went to traffic and conversion, isn't it? In the early years mm-hmm. um, when it was still in Austin, I believe. And, I was like, oh, well, you know, yeah, I showed up before in like my zebra stripe bathrobe and a little furry top hat. And you know what? Let, I'm just going to look like a human being this year. And so I got a suit. I got a haircut. And right at the very start of it, they're like, all right, well, this is, this is our schedule. You know, the thing they always say is our schedule, but it's kind of a joke. Actually, I guess now they don't say that. Now no, it's like, not. Oh, yeah. Stuff. But uh, at the time, I was like, yeah, well, there's our schedule agenda for the thing. But that's mostly a joke, just so we have one. But is there anything that you do want us to cover? And I'm, I'm, stand, I'm sitting in the back. I'm raising my hand. And my hand's getting tired. Like, I have to switch left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. Until finally, Ryan calls on me. A mic runner brings me a mic. And say, yeah, hey, are you guys going to cover? I don't remember what I was asking. And Ryan's like, wait, wait a minute. Is that is that Ori? <laughs> like, like, wait, wait, where's your zebra stripe bathrobe? Who and, are you? And, <laughs> and where's the thing? And then Perry's like, wait, wait, I know, I know. You got you got a a badger in your pocket, and it's gonna come out. <laughs> 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 the one time I tried not to look goofy or do anything stupid, it got me more attention than being goofy. Let's see, yeah, you started yeah. to blend in. You got a and reputation you... to uphold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. I, but you know it's it's a fun reputation because it's basically um uh, another podcast I, I i did this week to ask me like who who would you uh who alive would you want to have like lunch with and, mm-hmm. and i said richard branson because uh other than the fact that he's so badass he's had to be rescued more than 11 times by helicopter because of doing dumb shit like hot air ballooning and getting <laughs> you know stuck in here and there which i think is awesome oh yeah um he's got a sense of humor you know and and he's a billionaire by not only having like good business sense but by being a good person and having a sense of humor that's that's where he really stands out like yeah. british airways played really dirty trying to put him out of business oh, yeah. if you, and yeah. like like disgustingly dirty and and so they had this um uh, this brand new airplane that was going to take off they got all the press there and uh the front wheel wouldn't uh get back into the thing it's supposed to and so all the press is sitting there waiting british airways is embarrassed and Branson was there, so he texted uh, his people and had a, an airship, a blimp, show up <laughs> and with a banner that says, B.A. can't get it up and fly <laughs> it over the plane while all the news is there. Yes. That is awesome. That is awesome. I mean, I'd, I'd love to, to, to keep chatting on this, and we'll probably have to have a round two with you. We will. Just because I think you, you, um, the three of us have so much that we could keep talking about. Yeah. We'll but- do that after the contest. Yeah. yeah, let's see how that actually would be a great case cut case study. See how the contest went. See how your book sold. All that kind of stuff. But yeah. speaking of books, um, we're we're gonna link up to the contest and, and the book and all that kind of stuff in the show notes. Are there any books that you personally have taken a lot from that have been very very impactful on on your business or your life? Yeah, you know the, the funny thing is, uh, first of all, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, but I, I'll reiterate now that we're on the point. Um, I'm more of an audiobook person. Mm-hmm. And so for your listeners, they probably are too because they're listening. <laughs> probably true. For for the readers of your transcripts are <laughs> uh, I would say find your learning modality. Uh, a lot of us were just told to read books, but we don't realize that that may not be our modality, our way of consuming it that works for us. Totally. Um, 
So uh, a lot of these are audio books. I'm actually reading, um, I've had one of my art collectors just recommended this one for me. So I can't tell you yet that um, it's impacted my life, but I'm told it will. Mm -hmm. It's called Rocket Fuel. Uh -huh. And uh, Rocket Fuel is about how visionaries, the crazy, goofy people like me that have great ideas, like nonstop and can definitely think outside the proverbial box, but implementing things is kind of a bitch. Uh, and then you got the integrators who are the people who love numbers and love organization and love follow through and follow up. And so it's like, how can the two of you find each other, work with each other and not strangle each other? Yeah. And I mean, that that's not like exactly their subtitle, but that's how the person described it to me. So I'm looking to read that one. That's a good one. Um, I recommend that for you because yeah, that's, I think you would, you would do well if you had someone who just like was your implementer for whatever you're trying to do. Dude, you know? that's the wet dream right now. Like finding <laughs> that person and um, they're out there. They're, um, you know, I, I actually, I have a person who's going to be running my ads for, um, for this contest because um, I, I did an unveiling at a, at a friend's wedding. Uh, this guy and myself, uh, we both work with this guy. He runs his ads. I do their web stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I know he does good work and he saw my book and he was just like, Holy shit. Like, I kept the book in the parking lot. It was, it was a wedding, you know, it was about those people, mm -hmm. not about mm -hmm. me. So I, uh, I unveiled the painting, but I kept my book in the parking lot. And so this guy is looking, looking at the book and he's like, Holy shit. He's like, I, I know you probably don't want to talk about it, but uh, if you, if you need help marketing this, I would love this stuff is amazing. This stuff should be everywhere. And I said, actually, <laughs> I absolutely want to talk about yeah. it. Fuck the wedding. <laughs> and, uh, so we're, he's going to be working with me on that. And I, I definitely want to read this book before I start doing yeah. uh, that. So I don't screw it up. I'll give you one tip on reading quicker. I've been starting to use this because I'm kind of like you where I just kind of lose track of reading in a book. Uh, go to Flashbook Summaries or just Google that, Flashbook. Yep. And it's like 30-minute summaries of books like this. And it's oh, okay. like, it's solid. Yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, a book that uh, – I'll give you a, a couple of books. I mean, obviously, that, that, that one I just announced because it was right in front of me, like literally – uh, but, um, one of the ones that, uh, because I've listened to so many audiobooks, and while I was couch surfing, I literally, uh, would be driving for between four hours and 20 hours a day, very often. And I would just have audiobooks on the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, I've lost track of what I got from what one book, uh, so, but definitely like just consume as many books as you can, mm -hmm. um, Audiobooks are great for this because you can do it while you're driving, while you're working out, while you're doing whatever. Um, the some of my first ones, this is when I discovered audiobooks, uh, Win Friends and Influence People was yeah. a great one. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't listened to it in a long, long, long time because it's um, you know, it was written in the 1930s and you have to play at double speed because it's slow mm -hmm. and all that, but it it's a life changer. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. Ooh, the the War of Art, uh, by Stephen Pressfield. Mm -hmm. I have had this on my phone for about eight years. I think, um, like, regardless of which phone I've had, this this migrates with me. It's my in case of glass. Uh, sorry, in case of emergency, break glass book. Mm -hmm. I try to listen to it at least once a year. Love that uh, book. If if I'm ever in a slump, like I'm just not feeling productive or um i i break that book out it's it's a very fast read uh mm -hmm. listen whatever and um it's kind of about beating procrastination it's about making sure that you actually complete the things that you you set out to do and um yeah and i'm actually hoping to get a foreword for from stephen pressfield for my book mm. because um well, because of what I said, you yeah, know, just yeah. such a good, I mean, everything Stephen Pressfield has put out too. Um, you know, Going Pro and Nobody Wants to Read Your Shit and yeah. all yeah. of all of his nonfiction work. I can't speak to his fiction work because I've never actually read any of it, but all of his nonfiction work are some of my favorite books. So I love that recommendation. Yeah, I, I uh, 
Uh, product launch formula is just a good one. I don't know if I'd call it a book, but John did put it as a book called launch or mm -hmm. sorry, Jeff, not John. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't read launch, but I've, I've been through PLF a couple of times and that's just, uh, it's just good. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, one, one read that will absolutely transform your life is the evergreens profits yeah. uh, everything by them. Those guys are just <laughs> brilliant. Wisdom. Yeah, man. Uh, but, but, but seriously, you know, all, all these things, all they offer you is a filter, a filter to view the world with, right? Uh, we talked about accountability. I Everything that I now, I go to, a, you know, I'll go to a, a, a little concert and I'll watch a musician. I go, wow, that's amazing. You know, damn, I have a guitar, but I, like I never really did anything with it. I'd love to play like that. Now I don't just go, oh, I only wish. Now I go, okay, I bet I could get probably not that good, but but good enough to where I could do stuff on YouTube, impress mm -hmm. some friends, you know, have fun at a party, whatever, and also zen out and just have the personal satisfaction of being able to play songs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I do this for a year, one hour a day, I bet I could be like pretty damn good within a year. Dude, that's um, why that's why the office, you know, that we share with Dan that we are rarely in, but that's why it's like surrounded with instruments. Like you got drums, basses, guitars, keyboards. Yep, it's just yep. like I, just, the last time I was there, I came and played some Van Halen for you. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> it, but it's uh, you, you know, it's just it wasn't about instruments or that statement. It was about yeah. anything that you see you know that with proper accountability and proper discipline and willpower, you can actually complete it uh, and you can actually do that. And the same thing applies to marketing. It's um, it's a filter to see life with, right? Anyone can do a publish on demand, a print on demand book and put it on Amazon and you don't even have to print it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let them like deal with it through create space or whatever. Uh, but you know, how are you going to get a couple thousand, uh, sales? How are you going to put it on, uh, you know, and with, with anything you do, like, I don't, yeah, I make art, but, uh, I often think, okay, how am I, how am I going to move this? Right. When, when I, when I want to do that, I can. And a lot of, a lot of artists starve, a lot of restaurateurs go out of business because they don't know how to run a business. Um, I, I think. I think marketing is about the most important skill that you can have as a person. Mm. It's, it's an absolute superpower. You can change your life and you can absolutely change the lives of just about anyone you talk to because we're in this inbred circle of marketers and we just start thinking everyone knows this stuff. And then you go talk to like some real people and, and you're like, how the hell are you even still in business? Yeah. <laughs> like, I look at how, most businesses how are you that way. Breathing? <laughs> yeah. what, what was that? I, 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 said, I look at most businesses that way. You're like, wow, how, how have you survived for this long? Or are you yeah. going to survive any longer? You know, it's you're right, well, though. I'm helping a charity right now uh, with, with the same stuff. I was like, what are you guys doing? No. And I, I feel bad because it's the guy's, you know, personal dream and, and I'm, I'm now reshaping it. And now it's, it's, it's not, not creepy, but almost everybody's like, yeah, dude, just show me the way, you know, it's like, yeah. just tell me what to do. Like, it's like, like, like yeah. look at me like some kind of savior kind of messiah kind of person. Well, you are to them, man. So yeah. you're changing lives and you're, you're going to, you know, give them well, just a tremendous amount of value. You guys, that's... you guys are changing way more lives than me. Hey, 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 hey. That's, that's not true. That's you're debatable doing, for sure. You're but... doing it through art. So we have our, we all have our own yeah. art we're putting out. But no, it's, but... it's a great reminder that, um, you know, you, 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 we always sort of forget how much we know when it comes to business and marketing and that sort of thing. And, and you're right. It is, it is a skill set that most people on earth don't have, but we do get stuck in our own bubble of thinking that, oh, everybody's already building a list. Everybody's already, you know, uh, posting content on social media to grab attention. We just assume that stuff's happening by businesses because we're so immersed in it all the time. But really, most people outside of our bubble – that's you know that's genius to them right so uh yeah. it, it's definitely a great reminder but you know we we do have to we do have to sort of 
uh, Wrap it up. cut this this show off. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is actually one of our longer episodes we've done, but it's it's been amazing discussion. We'll definitely do a round two. But our final question is, where do you want to send people after listening to this episode? What's what's kind of that final call to action that you want to make sure people go and do when they uh, when they tune into this? Oh, where do I want to send them to? My house. My address is two three one five. No, get out. <laughs> It's going to be a big book launch party. Yeah. Uh, we're all going to squeeze in here. No, um, all right, well, first, I highly recommend my personal Facebook because that's the most fun. I don't just post my art on there, but also like the random shit that happens to me and my horrible jokes. The other day, I broke up a dog fight. Like, uh, <laughs> not intentional. It just was about to happen. I didn't want the dogs to die while I was dog sitting them. And uh, <laughs> I, my life plays out like an action comedy i mean come on bull poker enough said yeah. uh, so that's facebook.com forward slash ori that's o-r-i dot ben gal b-e-n-g-a-l i'd appreciate some likes at facebook forward slash the art of ori on instagram um the art of ori uh on twitter on um, the art of ori but um yeah, I never actually used Twitter because, I mean, come on. I'm one of your longest episodes. I don't like 140 characters or 280, whatever it's at now. <laughs> uh, I used to, but, uh, yeah, Facebook is uh, the place. And, obviously, theartofori.com. Right now, I've taken away all options other than to uh, enter my, uh, you know, to opt in, to be notified when um, – when the contest goes live, mm -hmm. which is going to be April 22nd, the start of year seven. Mm. Um, and as I said before, if you go to, if you'd like to see the art, the art of Ori.com forward slash year uh, six, year five, year four, year three, year two, and year one. And very soon in April year seven. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I we'll make that. sure to link all of that stuff up in the show notes. So people uh, can't miss you. And definitely let us know in that contest. I see it's in about 31 days, but I mean that's something we'd be we'd be happy to to let people know about. And definitely push because I mean you just do great stuff and we like yeah. it. So you guys should enter it too, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. we definitely will. I love that you're doing the contest, so it's good. We gotta wrap it up though. All <laughs> I'm right, I'm gonna keep talking, but yeah, man, have a good day. Thank you so Thank much, you. dude. Thank you guys. It's an honor. All right, man. All right, man. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And I hope you just enjoyed this episode you just listened to. Now, right now, before we sign off, I have a few things I would love for you to do. So the very first thing is to go find our guest on Facebook and tell them that you loved their episode with us. That's going to help them uh, just feel good about themselves, but also uh, it's going to spread the word a little bit more for us. So go find them on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and go say that you love their episode and maybe one cool thing that you learned there. The the second thing is to go to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast. Just look up Hustle and Flow Chart and hit the subscribe button. And the very last thing, the third thing, is to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast and help us spread the word more. That's how more people are going to get uh, this awesome knowledge, this, this cool podcast training, and a whole bunch of other cool free training that we give out at evergreenprofits.com. So that's about it. Go find them on Facebook. Go subscribe on iTunes and leave us a review. You would be amazing if you did that, but you're always amazing. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.